Today, we are visiting my friend Eliza, an avid collector and breeder of all things nano fish. We've done a tour on Eliza's room before, and she kindly invited us back to have another look. And it's safe to say I was super impressed by how much things had changed. There are so many different species here at the moment and so many different projects going on. Eliza's an absolute wealth of knowledge and I'm sure you guys will be just as amazed as I was. So you've gone for long tanks here. Yeah, so this side here, they're three foot tanks. Um, so they're three foot or 91 centimetres by 38 by 30 high, so quite shallow. Why have you done that? Probably so I can get four deep, uh, okay. <laughs> which I haven't really started to use anything on the top, but it does give me opportunities to grow out fish, and that was probably my idea, is the top ones I can just use as grow outs. Um, and yeah, uh, they've all been drilled um, and got an overflow going through them. Um, yeah. So how do you do the water changes on it? Um, it prime or safe um, water, and then it just overflows through. Oh, so you just don't worry so much. You just yeah. kind of go around with the hose and just Yeah, as long up. as everything's got um, yeah, to chlorinator in it first. Yeah. Yeah. That um, is the struggle with our water, because like a lot of people run automatic water changes through like a filter. Yes. But we've got that, our chloramine's like insanely um, high. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, and it fluctuates so much because our yeah. water source is so far away for um, our area. It, it fluctuates so much depending on um, other weather events. So yeah, yeah for sure. You, you, you can't just guess. You can't trust it. No. So you've got, I mean, down here, these are rainbow amber tetras. Yeah, so they're wild caught rainbow amber tetras. Um, Have you had a crack at breeding them? Not yet. I've only had them for a few months. Um, uh, a theme you'll come across is you can't do everything all the time. No. Um, as much as we all try. Um, you definitely can't. You definitely can't. You know, sometimes it's setting something up and that means you're foregoing time that you could be breeding something or, yep. um, yeah, you're working on another project. But, um, yeah, now I've got space to work on heaps of projects. So you'll find there's a heap of tanks that aren't in use, but that gives me space um, and opportunity to be able to do new things. So later on you'll try and do those? I sure will. I'd love to have a go at them. I don't think it'd be overly hard. And you got a little lemon bristlenose here? Yeah. Long yeah. fin blue eye lemon. Yep, yeah, that's the one. And next to it there's a calico long fin, um, which is super here. pretty. Oh yeah. That is a nice one. I love them. They look like little dragons. I know. You've also got, what are these, Kerry Tetras? Um, yeah. Two pairs Ooh. in there, and I haven't bred them, but I think they would breed quite easily. Yeah, well, I just saw out, out the back there's some, some action going on. Yeah, around the plants. Yeah, they really yeah. like that. So how are you finding the plants in the pots? Excellent. So I've done that on this side, mainly because it's probably a bit more breeding setup, but the change in fish's behaviour, just adding the plants is phenomenal. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you see them spar more often, and yeah, they're a lot more excitable. Um, the plants are growing well for you too? Yeah, I yeah, think nice. so. Yeah, they're looking... Do you they're get to sell pretty. any of the plants? Um, I haven't done that with these ones. Um, I, I guess they're common plants, these. Yeah, they're just yeah. pretty common yeah. plants. And, um, yeah, I guess I just haven't really gotten that far. Um, yeah. You know, the, the wee classic can't do everything all the time. Yeah. <laughs> what, what else is on this, this um, side? So that's, that's it for the side. That's so that's, it. yeah, that's the, been the last one I've set up. Um, it's a wee pencil fish there. A little pencil fish. Bread leaves? Not yet. No. These are just like back catalogs sort of. Uh, they're on my to-do list, yeah. yeah. It's the mile long to-do list. Yeah. The thing is, once you get a lot of tanks, it's like, um, what do I do with a lot of these tanks? Yes. Like, and so there's like a lot of things that I want to still breed. Like, and right now I've been at, at this stage, like focusing on like some of the plecos yep. and royal whiptails and things like that, just because my interest is there, and they just seem to be doing well now. But yep. like, you just kind of. Yeah, you can't put a lot of pressure on yourself to be breeding like yeah. everything all at once. No, you can't. And, and you'd probably find that as well. In Australia, we don't have access to fish all the time. So a lot of them are very seasonal. Yeah. We may only, they may only get imported once or twice a year. Um, so sometimes it's like you see fish um, and you just have to buy them because yeah. um, you may not see them again for a year or two or whatever it may be. A bit of collectoritis. And... Uh, so you'll certainly see some collectoritis coming through. Um, These are this awesome idea. fish. Like I can already see some of the amazing different species like up here these tenorless yeah they're really really pretty oh my gosh they are yeah so these are the golden blue eyes yeah and um 
when they display, they it's like a iridescently gold and mm. bronze color that comes through them, and I don't even. It's absolutely wild how a fish can have like metallic yeah. colors through them, um, but they're really really lovely. And um, have you found breeding these? They have really little eggs. They have really little eggs. Um, they most of that have been most fish in there actually colonies colony. Colony. Colony, thank you. <laughs> uh, spawned for me. Um, and, but yeah, no, I, I do find them difficult. Um, I have changed how I've been um, doing the eggs recently. And I've had a huge uptake of success, so um, I'll talk through, through that. Yeah, what are yeah. you, I mean, just. Yeah, what? I'm just changing my breeding trays. And okay. Do you want to look? Let's just look now, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so. Oh, these are cool. These are the Lowell's Fish Lab. Yeah. So. Do you have a 3D printer? We do. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, so I have. I will be selling these on my website. Um, Fifty nine dollars. So I have yep. been um, talking with him, and as a yeah, another creator, obviously um, there'll be links on the website um, if you want to buy them. Um, but the success is absolutely night and day, going from the regular breeding tray to to these. Um, Why is that? Like, I don't know. I, I think it's better intake of air. Um, you don't get snails, um, and the water flow is just more consistent. Yeah. Um, so you've got like, so you've got the air coming in here. Yeah, air goes in there, and then um, it bubbles through there, depending on. And so you can change that just with your air system. And it doesn't like come in as vigorously. Yeah, and that's what this wee cap is, and so it, um, yeah, it doesn't knock them around, and so it's really, really gentle. Um, and then it just obviously comes through the overflow. How does the water come through, actually? Um, it's just through an airlift, uh, if you go down. Ah, um, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit dark, because of the, oh, I see it, like there. Yeah, so it's just an airlift pulling it through, and then you've got a pre-filter sponge, so you don't get dunk and stuff, you don't get as yep. much mold and... Dunk. You couldn't have perfected that more. Well, no. he couldn't, yeah, I mean... He's done an amazing job. Yeah, I it's, just don't see how it could have been better. Well, I think he worked with Dean from a aquarium crop or Dean yeah. Turtle to, to do it. Um, yeah. And it's, yeah, so the, the first few were... I'm jealous, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to copy and paste this at my room. Um, well, I'm trying to. It's, uh, the tray's like 10 hours to print, and then it's like two and a bit hours for the... It's so much filament. Um, it's, yeah. Uh, One of the questions I have, yeah. so you've got like... Obviously, you're not doing what I've been doing. Um, so you've got like all the different blue eyes. We'll go through these in a minute. Yeah. But like, you're doing them separate. Um, most of the time, separate. Yeah. Yeah, because I've had issues. Like, I think it just obviously naturally this would be an issue. Uh, I've been trying to hatch out like every single blue eye together. Yeah. And like, especially the tenorless, they must just hatch and be too small, and they might even be eaten by like the fork tails are quite a big. And the fork tails um, and the luminatus are really quick growing comparison yeah, to um, a lot of the others as well. And I think, yeah, it, it, it's probably, I, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't have a perfect system. Um, I have been just, it's all trial and error in the fish room, right? So well, it seems to be working. Like um, you've got, you know, in here, look at all these babies. Yeah, it just, the, the hatch rates just heaps better. So I, Probably the only sad part is it takes up more room on the, the rack. I used to be able to get 10 trays um, and now it's only six. Mm -hmm. But the upside is it's a ton more fry, which means it's a better use of my time. Um, and I'll be able to share them out to, to everyone much easier. So these are orange fork tails? Yep. And then, so you've taken the eggs out and you just throw them in the tray? Yep. Uh, sorry, no. No, no, no. I, I take the eggs out and then they go down probably a bit like you might do with some of your other fish. Yeah. Um, they go down um, in a bowl, yeah. and then I add a, a bit of an Indian almond leaf. Um, serves a few purposes. So the Indian almond leaf, one will provide tannins, which will stop the fungusing, sorry, it won't stop fungusing, but it will prevent the fungus eggs contaminating other eggs. So any infertile eggs will still be infertile and still fungus, but and they won't spread. And it's natural. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't find it spreads between the eggs, the, the fungus eggs don't yeah, spread around. Um, Do you find the oxygenation, like by having it in a bowl, like does that worry you like the eggs aren't getting enough oxygen or obviously not really. it's not making a difference? No. Yeah. Um, and they're not in there for long. So I will keep them in there until the first fry hatches and I will top it up with um, dechlorinated water as it evaporates. Um, and then when they start to hatch, um, the Indian almond leaf has started to decompose and so the, the fry can start to eat off the decomposed yeah. um, leaf. 
um, as one of their first foods. Um, and then, yeah, um, after a couple of fryer in there, um, they get moved to a brew box. And then they go in here like this. Yeah. And then from there, what do you feed them when they're this size? Um, I'll do vinegar reels um, and um, fry food twice a day. Um, and then as they start to get a bit bigger, which some of them are, they'll move through to um, their microworms, banana worms. And I try and alternate that every day because they're slightly different sizes. So, um, and yeah, and then eventually baby growing. Mm. So with this overflow too, like, yeah. does that... So the overflow, so they, they just kind of the water line sits halfway through the overflow, and so it's always just going through it. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit deeper than what we see, so it's um, yeah, it's a little bit deeper than what we see. Um, and then you've got the the safety of um, the the groove in case something terrible happens, but then they're just going to overflow through to your sump. Yeah. So, but like, do fry get wedged in that ever? Not what I've seen. Okay. Right. So you got fork tails. Yep. And then here you've got luminatus. Yep. These are all baby luminatus. Yep. Mellus, which we'll have to go and have a look at. Yeah. They're, they're really very cool. cool. Mm -hmm. Um and yeah. Uh, Pacifics too. Yep. Signifers. Um they're a Marichi River one and they've got orange finish and they're super lovely. Let's have a look. Have a look, yeah. Um they are they're kind of uh, Richie. There you go. Oh yeah. Did you collect these yourself? No, I actually got them from one of the auctions. Oh yeah? Yeah. Uh, anyone who doesn't go to any of the Ooh. auctions is uh, is mad. They're good fun and good value. Yeah, I didn't get to go to the last one, but they are fun. It's yeah. nice to see everyone doing stuff it like that. certainly is, yeah. Yeah, they are pretty. They're really pretty. I've got a, um, a pond out back um, that I've had them in for uh, maybe like five years, six years. Um, and they're probably a bit more yellow, um, yeah. and and they're nice. Um, but yeah, these ones are, are particularly nice because they've got that orange fin. Um, yeah. Yeah, oh, cool. And what did we miss up here? We missed these. These are the ficatas you have. Yes. Yeah. And so. You have. Yeah, I've got these here. It must be the same. Yeah, I think so. They're so pretty. They are so incredibly pretty. Those males are actually quite large now too. They are, and probably larger than people think. They lay a mountain of eggs too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the the fry survival or the hatch rate really depends on the temperature as well. I've noticed um, in the over the last couple of weeks, but as we've gotten warmer, um, I've gotten heaps more eggs, and um, yeah, so that that's always good fun as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah, they are pretty. Um, and then these are the millers down here. I wanted to have a look at these. Yeah. They are one of the nicest blue eyes. They are incredibly nice. It's funny because they don't really even have blue eyes. They've yeah. got like that, they just they generally have like a honey eye. And how many eggs are they laying for you? Not a lot. Yeah, they don't, they're very, yeah. Not a lot at all. Um, Peacock gudgeons. Yeah, I haven't done anything, well, <clears throat> I haven't had any success with those. I don't know, have you bred them at all? Uh, I had like, so I bought a bunch from a wholesaler and then, um, yeah, they were spawning and then I kind of like didn't really do anything. And they were just really shaky, like like most wholesale fish just like yeah, come in take, with this. Yeah. They come in with issues and yeah. even if they don't present themselves instantly, like it just comes back to bite. Um, which is really interesting you say that. I think that's probably like one of the benefits of buying fish from like yourself or myself yeah. is um, the, the fish haven't gone through um, the wholesale um, like chain. chain and yeah, they're not, uh, they haven't been shipped and shipped and shipped and you know if they've been brought into the country they haven't been quarantined for i think it's like six weeks or something incredible yeah um which is fine which is important for uh, well they've been fed too and <laughs> yeah like yeah a lot of fish don't get fed at wholesale and yeah whatnot, but um and where you, you know you're buying it from a home hobbyist or a hobbyist like yourself where the the fish are treated like well and they're treated properly and you're treating them like you would your own pets. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, they're getting good food and they're getting lots of water changes. They're in, you know, a naturalish environment. They're um, just getting love. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty much. <laughs> um, so here, these are Luminatus. Yeah, yeah. These would be a very popular one for you. They sure are. Um, and I think they're fairly prolific. Um, they are, definitely. 
Yeah, I've got my numbers up for these really easily. Yeah, you'll find the, the tank below you is... Uh, babies? Oh, there you go. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. And they're nice too. They're a nice size. Yeah. Plenty of them around. Yeah, I'm never going to stop breeding these, I think. They're just like, a they're great so pretty. one. Yeah. And how often do you get a red fish? Yeah, so well, cool. I don't know. Like, I just don't know why they've never been more popular. Like, I have no idea. They're so pretty. Maybe just access or something like that. Maybe. Maybe just not enough people have been breeding them. Because probably the other thing to think about is you've got to actively breed all of these. They yeah. just don't magic up the numbers yourself. Um, no. You've got to actively do it all. You can't batch them either. Like, you've got to come in for like 10 days and pick out yep. 20 eggs. Yeah. And then, that, then, yeah, and then you've got to raise them up. Yeah, yeah. What's, um, what else you got down here? Uh, some Montezuma um, sorters. Oh, Hi, yeah, I remember these last time. Yeah. These uh, look like all females. Yeah, I don't know what's happened there. I'm, I'm really feeling hopeful, but um, it might be a sad day for all of us. <laughs> yeah. If maybe females often. won't sell. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, maybe just chuck a ma Oh no, you got. I can see some gonopodiums. I think. Yeah, you I have hope males. So. Yeah. Um, but there, it's That's certainly looking female heavy. It might be like a four to one sort of ratio when Maybe we go the, to sell them. <laughs> well, there's a male there, so you're right. And then when you get a close look, yeah, there are. There, yeah. It's very female heavy. Uh, it is still female heavy though, because you can see the like, body shape's a little bit different. How the female's a bit more rounder and the, the male's a bit more long. Maybe longer. they just take a long time to grow. It could be. Yeah. And that's probably the other part that people tend to forget how long, I think you've talked about it recently in some of your videos, but fish take ages to grow. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, a lot of them do. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that's the struggle. Like, you might put all this effort into, like, a batch of fish and then um, lose Something it. Happen. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of It's a lot of work down. And, um, but part of becoming a good breeder, I think, is, is getting over that. Yeah. Like, I remember losing, like, big batches of angels that I'd got to, like, Two sellable size and and then losing them and it being very disheartening but everyone kind of does it and yeah it happens yeah it makes it, it makes it way better when you do get it to work yeah so absolutely. these are cool the ivan yeah. stoffies yeah i yeah they're a bit interesting so i think they've got the bluest eyes out of all the blue eyes i think they do i think they might be a little bit more aggressive to each other though um so i originally had three pairs and at different times, we've just ended up with none. Um, so currently, this is my, I guess my F1 uh, group of them, um, and we'll see how we go. Um, them having it, yeah, being in a bigger group. Hopefully, that will spread out any aggression they may have. Yeah. Um, yeah. These are a cool fish too. Not a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, know about these. they are very cool. Um, I've really struggled breeding these. Um, Me they, too. I think need higher temperatures. We're just not getting any eggs or getting very, very... Very few eggs uh, and then a really low hatch rate of the eggs. Yeah. Um, or a really, really low fertilization of the eggs as well. I really struggle with them. But that's the fun of it, right? Like, it's just another challenge to go, uh, well, that didn't work and that didn't work. Let's try another thing. Yeah, these uh, are like the blue fork tails, kind of. Yeah. yeah, they are very nice. Uh, and probably on a dark sand substrate, uh, it would look more blue, but they are... They are blue, right? I'm they are blue. Yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. They're a light blue in that substrate, but a darker blue if I had a, a darker substrate. Yeah. No, they're, they're awesome. One of the tricks to get more eggs, um, and I haven't seen any fry yet, just because I've been taking all the eggs, and yep. it's the time thing. So, like, taking all the eggs, putting them together. So, I don't know, then maybe that's screwing up the hatching. But when I want more eggs, I was adding a bit of salt to the water. Oh, yeah, interesting. And, um, yeah, that's a good idea. And a water change. Yeah. It seems to make them work a bit better. I heard I think Jason told me that. Yeah, I'll give that a go. The salt, I don't know. You what can only try it, right? Yeah, just bump the hardness up a little bit. Yep. Um, but yeah, oh, you got good uh, true days? Yeah. So they're just the, wow. the regular ones. I'll, yeah, these look so good. Are they a popular one? Uh, yeah. Yeah, they are. When I have them, they are pretty popular. Do you know what locale these are? No. Are uh, they the same as last they, time? Yeah, they are the same. I think they're the Cadells. Cadells, yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, they're doing really well. I think they really like having the plants in there. They're not really spawning in them, but they just like it and, you know, it gives them more, I guess, territory to spar in and, yeah. uh, and what? They're such a dainty little fish. I know. I really like them. And then, we're in our eyes. Yeah. And they're flaring up. They are. Uh, they're pretty pretty. 
So how do you go raising the fry with these? Uh, pretty terrible. Um, I, again, haven't really had much luck, but it is, it is, um, I'm hoping using the, the new breeder box system, I'll do better. Are you picking um, eggs? I have been picking eggs. I've tried popping them in the, a tank. Um, I've had the most luck uh, for them just to colony spawn, which is half of them in there. Uh, but obviously I need a better, better method than that. Jeez, he's putting on a show. I Oh, cool. What a good boy. See, this is why I love fish. Like, look at that. That is super cool. That needs to be in your living room. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. I love them because they don't even really look like rainbows. They're like this complete, like what fish looks like that? They're like... I don't know. They're yeah. cool. But yeah, they have the tiniest fry, honestly. And I, the tiniest hate... eggs, they're ridiculous. I know this whole self-promo thing, but yeah, like... I've actually raised up babies on bug buffet. Yep. So the way I've been breeding them is I'd, I'd have them in a tank like this. Yep. And then what I'd do is they'd spawn for 10 days, just leave the eggs in there, and I'd take the whole group, move it, yep. and then drop the water level, mm -hmm. and then have like very low air. Yep. And then I'd just feed the, the bug buffet on the surface. Yep. And then you've got snails and things in here, so they'll clean up all the, the leftover food. Yep. And I found that kind of raises them up. and. I know, vinegar eels and stuff like that, surely that'd help too. Yeah, I think they're actually too small for vinegar eels when they hatch yeah. out because those, like a pen, a dot on a pen is bigger than uh, their eggs. Their eggs are just stupidly small. Another thing you can do is the filter juice, just so you yep. can squeeze out and put it on top. But I'm sure you'll figure it out. You're a very good breeder, so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they just have the <laughs> freaking microscopic fry. <laughs> microscopic yeah. fry. Microscopic get mess. Yeah. yeah. Um, cool. That's pretty much it for what's yeah. here. Yeah. Um, There's a bit of odds and ends and whatever. Just, but yeah, nothing really through there. Got there. Um, what's happening here? What else? What's happening here? Well, I didn't even look down here. Ah, uh, yeah, sure. What is? What's down here like? Uh, we've got Connie with a, a question mark. Um, there are fry. <laughs> there are fry. Uh, sometimes when we pick eggs, you're like. Did I put the right eggs in the right bowl? Um, oh, okay. And you've just got to wait until they raise up to uh, to find out exactly what they are. But I'm pretty certain they were Conae. Um, and then some Catrudes. Yeah, and then some Ficardus, I think. Um, like so I've got some more air tubes coming, which uh, will help out a wee bit there, just to get that surface level to break off some tenilis, which are doing well. Um, Oh yeah, these would go amazing in a pond outside, I just know it, because my colony doesn't seem to eat their fry that bad. Mm. And there's I like, I've got a, I've got a spare yeah, I'd, try it over summer. I'd do that if I was you. Yeah. I'd just give it a try and see how it goes. But And, and I guess the hard thing is, because our winters are actually cold, where we've got to bring the fish, we wouldn't yeah. be able to have them outside all year round. I'm thinking about setting some greenhouses up in my backyard. Fun. Yeah, that'd be cool, hey? Because so yeah, I think then you can keep them outside all year. Yeah. It'd be hot enough for sure. Yeah. So. Nice. Um, Move over to these ones here, was it? Yeah. 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 Sure. Sorry. Uh, the top ones there are um, exclamation point raspberries. Did you breed uh, these? I haven't yet. I would like to. <laughs> time, time. Time, time. Yeah. yeah. They are nice. Okay. Exclamation point raspberry. I remember these from the last tour. Yeah. Yeah. And then. The baddest won't come out either. I don't um, think. They definitely won't come out when we feed them. So, um, but they're really pretty. The male is like this blue colour. Yeah. Um, super pretty. And then we've got some scarlet ballet baddest in there. Um, just a pair. So they're, oh, they're tiny. Oh, they are so small. Um, so how long have you had them? Oh, like three months. And they haven't. That's this, as big as they no, are. No, no. Well, I think they're still small. Uh, oh, okay. I think they've still got a wee bit of time. They, they were very small when I got them. Uh, but they're probably not too far looking at them. Um, and then you've got the, the tiger, Dario's, yeah. in the next three tanks. So I've just got two pair, uh, a pair in each, yep. um, which I've only set up pretty recently, but they definitely like to spawn um, over the summer period. So um, this is their prime time to spawn. Um, How do you spawn them? Just good food. Just good food? Yeah. Like what do you do? Food. Put them in a tank like this? Yeah, put them in a tank like this. They So they need a an area to have a, a territory um, and um, they, yeah, previously uh, you just see fry and scoop them up and pop them in a breeder box. Yeah. 
Um, that is what I've done for the last couple of years. You just see fry in there. Yeah. They so oh. just put a pear in and yeah. And then just leave. And, them. and probably the trick is making sure you feed them live food. Yeah. So they're getting oh, a couple yeah. of types of live food every day. Um, when I hope to see fry, or when I think there might be fry, which is where like where I'm at now, um, at this time of year, I will make sure I'll add like vinegar eels and micro worms um, just attached, just in case there is fry sitting in the tank. Yeah. Um, so they can have it. Um, yeah, the more cover the better. So they probably would benefit from more more cover than what I've got there. Um, but they're a pretty skittish fish. Um, they definitely do better with a like a yeah, fish think, with them. But yeah. um, you know, we want to have fry survive, so you can't have both. So like, and then you got this like jagged substrate. So yeah, like, obviously so the, the eggs, eggs fall into that, yeah, and it's right. yeah a bit more impossible for them to get to them. Yep, yeah. and, and then, the parents won't see them as much. And yeah, oh yeah, there's the is that female. Please stay there, please. Yeah, that's the female. So she looks like she's ready to spawn. Whoa! How pretty is that, huh? Yeah, wow. Yeah, so it is worth it when you do eventually see them. Yeah, because they, right, they weren't cheap. Back. They were like 120 each. For each fish? Each fish. Jeez. Yeah, so I'd like to get some fry out of them. Yeah, to that'd make be them desirable. Yeah. <laughs> that would be desirable. Yeah. yeah. And then, should we move over to some of these? Sure. So these are shellies. Yeah, these were my shellies, or some of my shellies, yeah. So we saw these last time, the similar. Yeah. They are cool. They're like little marine fish, but they're not. I know. They look like they're meant to be marine. And if you can get closer, maybe on like, you can see like, they've got like little fangs and stuff, which is, I don't know, adorable. Oh, can you actually see like... Yeah, you can see them. They've got little fangs that come through, um, and they're another one that really benefits from live food. Yeah. Yeah. We'll talk about how you do live food soon, because I know a lot of people want to know that. They're a cool one. They are very cool. And like, they're a little bit chunkier than some of the other shellies, but they're they're very nice. Like the males, you know, a full-size male is still quite quite chunky. Um, they're not too tiny, but they're still quite chunky in comparison to. I suppose, do you sell the many? Fish. Um, we sell some. Yeah. yeah. Um, the hard thing with shell dwellers is they've got a really long grow out time. Yeah. Um, which a lot of people maybe not uh, don't appreciate how long their grow out time is. Like eight months is an uncommon, and then they're yeah. still small. Really? Yeah. Um, Do you just breed them in here? Like? Yeah. They're just, they're uh, they're just they're colony breed. Um, in fact, they're amazing parents. So. Well, it just makes it so easy though. Oh, so it's just so like easy. set and forget. Yeah. So it's the same with these, right? Yep, as long as you're feeding them lots of foods. Um, they, and it's, you know, periodically they'll have a spawn. Um, they'll come yeah. out for food. What are these? Hequi eye. Hequi yep. <laughs> they are cool. They are very cool. And when they're like um, feeling a little bit stressed, you get those darker bands on them. Yeah. Um, and then other times they'll be. Yeah, they have such what? derpy faces. I know. Oh, cool. And you look at this pothos as well growing underwater. Yeah. Um, you can see like the X is obviously reaching for light. The, the leaves are getting smaller and smaller. Yeah. Um, because it's not enough light for them. Um, and you'll see on the other side where I've got some pothos that have like heaps of light and the leaves yeah, just get leaves, massive. Yeah. yeah. And what's down in these ones? Um, Golds? Some golds, yep. Oh, I love those. Yeah. They look so good. Like my iPhone's really good at filming these. Um, I think the best thing about the shellies is they don't move a whole lot, so you can always get good footage of them or yeah, yeah good photos. And their faces, they look like, I don't know, like octopus? I think that people call them like um, bulldog. Yeah, um, yeah. It's like that little shortened snout. Yeah. yeah. Definitely bulldogs. And then. What are these ones? Uh, your Maltese. Maltese. Yeah. See, I've just never, I've never even kept these. Whoa, look at that guy, it's a mobile. I know. There's definitely something for everyone here. That's cool. And down, again? And down is Gold Spot Grimace. Um, and then you've got... So they're just... Attract a female into that shell. 
Yeah. Yep. Um, or the, they'll pair up and... Um, What's this dude doing? Put, Caring. He's uh, trying to be invisible. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> You're scaring him. <laughs> what a funny fish. So they attract a female into those shells yep. or something? Um, the so female will go into the shell and lay eggs. The yep. male will either fertilise from just outside the shell or just inside the shell. Um, and the female will fan the eggs um, inside the shell. And the way they... So the female cares for them? But the male protects them as well. So the male will like protect the territory around yep. the shell? Yeah. Um, so the way the shell dwellers all work, the idea is that they move, well, they do move the shells um, to go with the water flow. Um, so the food will go into the shells. Um, so I guess when you're feeding them, it's really important to feed them from the same place each time. Yeah. Um, so because they've moved the shells to be in the right place for their fry, because really? um, they are such great parents. Um, yeah, just to keep that consistency with them. I didn't realize how many are in here. Like if you look in each shell. There's like there's a fish in there. There, I saw yeah, there's one probably in about there. twenty or thirty in there. And then and in here, like there's like shells there, none there, there. Yeah. So is there like a female in there just fanning away, probably on some eggs or something? Um, like it could be, or it could be males trying to hide because you know the phones are scary. Yeah, yeah, I get it. <laughs> cool. Um, does that finish up this side? Yeah, it sure does. So, take us away. Where, where should we go now? go over to the cool yeah. side which would be nice um, so these are one of definitely one of my favorite rainbows I think they're my favorite actually the sex they're so pretty there's no difference between the males and the females no uh, they school, small as well small, they school gold. really well like, pretty as yeah. they're kind of golden right yeah well gold with a green well they're green with a gold overlay um, yeah. they are so pretty um, yeah they prolific as well. <laughs> super prolific. So I've stopped pulling any uh, eggs and or doing anything with them because I, I don't know if I'll sell them or not. Um, yeah, it crosses my mind. I'm like, I just have a whole tank full of them. I think they were the only, they are the only rainbow that I would like. I could just do a six foot tank just with them and be really happy with life. Apparently, they're from like an area in Papua New Guinea that's just like completely out of bounds, like which most of New Guinea is. Yeah. But um, yeah, so it makes it hard to get them. Mm -hmm. And uh, the ones we've got, we kind of got to protect, especially here. Yes, yeah. Just with, um, with our DPI and stuff being ridiculous. So, and then down here, these are parvas. Yeah, again, very prolific, really easy to raise. Um, Stumpy and red. Yeah, um, well, so nice and small. Yeah, yeah. Just not sure what to, um, I don't know. I was, Originally, I was thinking, oh, I'll have room for, to do lots of rainbows. And now that I've got them, I'm like, oh, rainbows really need a lot of space. Like, um, yeah. even the small ones, you know, they need a lot of space. Um, yeah, to grow them out. And... Yeah, yeah, to do them justice. And um, as you know, rainbows take um, a lifetime to grow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, which is fine, you know, not all Especially good things. Especially in small long. tanks as yeah. well, yeah, for sure. Um, no. But I, I, I do enjoy them and um, yeah, they're good fun. Yeah, I've always wanted to try these parvas out. I might need right. to cop a few from you. You yeah. can probably take those spoiling mops with you if you like. <laughs> <laughs> Raise up some. Um, what's happening down here? Um, so same as last time. Uh, oh, they're pretty. They are so pretty. Which tetras are those ones? So they're the Valfin. Uh, reed tetras and then just your ember tetras. Even ember tetras are so nice. I know. Have you bred those ember tetras? No, I haven't. But again, that to do list is super yeah, yeah. long. Yeah. Um, and I'd love that. Like they're not expensive tetras, but um, how how cool are they? Yeah, I've I've really wanted to delve into it, especially I've got that little nano rack sort of thing yeah. set up in my room now. So I want to do more of things like this, but. Every Tetra's got some nuance to it. And, and, they do. And, yeah. I think that's the fun of it, right? Like, because it's like another challenge. You're like, okay, I've got this cryptic puzzle I have to solve. Yeah. Yeah, no, and it comes, It what it does come down to is um, passion. So, like, yeah. whatever you're most passionate about is what will do the best. So, yeah, true. to me, it seems like the pseudo moguls right now. Yeah, they're, yeah they're, they seem that's probably, to be, yeah. That's probably a really fair. Um, I always, you've heard of it's like time, money, and motivation. You need all three at the same time to do anything. Yeah. Um, exactly. So it does, it just comes in and it 
comes in waves. Like yeah. I went through like a big better phase like a year and a bit ago. You know, so it does. It goes in like yeah cycles. So, and then what are these? Oh, um, what are these called again? Goodyears. Yes, and um, I had like one really good size. Well, maybe two spawns from these guys, but I haven't had anything since. But I am hoping. I don't know if it's been a like a seasonal thing or. So they what have a it really is? Long gestation period. They have incredibly long gestation. It's like eighty days, um, but I think naturally we always think that um, live bearers must be consistently pregnant. But I actually just don't think that's the case with them. Yeah. And so you see that smaller one that will come into frame eventually. Um, that one there is about a year old now. Right. Um, and so it's still not reached full size at over a year or about a year now. Um, and um, umbilical cords. Yeah, they? that's the ones. Yeah. I wish I could have seen that. Uh, which is just wild, right? Like, how crazy is that? Um, so, the, you know, I guess the flip side or the good side about having a fish that has a long gestational period and takes a long time to grow out means they they have a long life expectancy. Or typically, fish would have yeah. a longer life expectancy when when that's the case. Yeah, they're definitely cool. Yeah. They're very rare. Nice. Right, we'll keep going. Cool. Um, do we go and do more shell flowers? Or? Yeah, let's get the shellies. Keep up with them. Yeah. So. Calvus, are they? No. No, no they're not calvus, yeah. Calinurus. Um, so that's the male, and he's super pretty. Oh, yeah. They're so they're funny. They look like they're meant to be like eight foot long. Yeah. But they're not, they're like a little, this <laughs> um, and, and the differences like between males and females is phenomenal. So like the female, uh, that's the mum just in front of us there. And she made um, all of these fish. Yeah. So that was two spawns and I, um, obviously that's enough. Um, and I'm hopeful that, um, yeah, that the rest of them will keep on top of any future fry until these ones can find new homes. Um, they're just starting to sex out, which is good. Um, that, yeah, the females will probably stay roughly the same sort of size, and, and then the males will just keep growing, and they get that long um, lion tail. Um, they look like paradise fish in a way. I know, they do, yeah. yeah. They yeah. heaps like paradise fish. And then what are these down here, black ones? Were they? Uh, the black ones are these ones here. Oh, there's a baby. There's a few babies in there. Look at that. Little cute guy. And, and his dad. again, yeah. These uh, might be my favourite Ockies. Yeah. Um, these ones and the gold. Yeah. I guess those are the only ones, really. But uh, there's these ones here that are blue, but the the blacks yeah. are way better. And that little baby there too. So that's there's dad. A, yeah, there's like maybe like three sizes there. So they. It makes me think of like you know at the start of Nemo, and they've got like the parents taking all the kids to to the um, school. It's yeah. like dad like taking all those little like, no, it sounds cringe, but <laughs> that's what it makes me think of when I look at it. Look at that. Little wild fish. Yeah. Uh, so these are meant to be the blue, which I think are pretty, I don't know, they remind me more like a gold. Um, the, the younger ones have like a blue sheen. They're more like a white with a yeah. blue sheen or lighter with a blue sheen. This is the first lot of fry I've had from them. I don't know. Uh, yeah. I guess I, I just want to grow up the fry to see for myself how how they are. And the fry look nice. Yeah, I, from what I can work out, they kind of have a bit more of a bluer tinge when they're younger, and then it loses it as they get older, and they become a little bit more goldish in colour. Mm. Or the base stops being as um, light, and yeah, it becomes a little bit more goldish. Um, yeah, you know, yes. No surprise, collectoritis cut. Uh, yeah, the kicks place in a big and... factor, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Um, so down there we've got another lot of golds. Yep. I'm gonna try some of these out. Yeah. Um, so I'm hoping I sold a heap of them that had gone out. So hoping that this. What are they worth? Uh, like, I think I was doing 85 each or wow. five for 250 maybe. I'd have to double check. Um, but. They're so they are quite because, expensive. Yeah. yeah, they're expensive though because they don't, they're not very prolific. Um, yeah. And then the fry take eight months before they're sellable. Um, and they won't breed if there's fry in there. They're like, they, they, that's it. You've got one set of fry, you might only have five fish until they're 
of adult size. Um, before so like they were you might again. only make eight eight babies a year. Oh, probably like maybe 15 or 20, but not not a lot. Not yeah. when people want to get a group because you have to get a group to be able to you know get a colony going. Um, so like. I guess from a consumer point of view that certainly not um, going to make anyone any money even though from a you're, you're spending the money buying them yeah um, it feels like and it is a lot of money but the, yeah. the reason people charge a lot of money is they've taken up a space and they're yeah well even like live food twice a day um, you buy like 10 10 rainbows it could cost you 200 bucks yeah so yeah fish are expensive it's an expensive hobby it is an expensive hobby um, um down here we have the uh, on a not on out of penis. penis. Yep. This name. On out of penis, eh? Yeah. Collector artists. Ah, oh, these are very pretty though. Um, I haven't had any fry yet. Um. At least they sit still. It makes them so easy to film. Mhm. Mm Oh, well, should we keep going? Sure. So, what are you doing with all of this over here? Um, so these are all antlers, um, and these two here are dwarf guppies. Yep. So you just keep them in these these tanks. Just keep them in these tanks. Lots of water changes. Lots of you know fresh food. And then um, just pick the coals out. Yep. Um, and we've they're got it. So a, nice, blue uh, pandas. Yeah, they're all nice. And you, these must be just great little money makers for you. Yeah, they're not bad. Yeah, just so easy. So those are blue pandas. Yeah. These look better than last time. Thai orchids. Yeah, they're very, very pretty. Just done a bit of line breeding. The thread fins. Yeah, yeah. What's up here? Japan blues? Yeah. Let someone come in and ask for them. But it's like you can't keep everything. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Those like thousands of fish, you just absolutely cannot keep anything, everything all the time. These are all good. Oh, wait, orange spots. Orange spots. Endless, yeah. I remember these from Glens. Yeah, that, they came from Glens. Yeah. Line. Yeah. They must be insanely hardy. Because, yeah. like, you bred a lot of them too, it looked like. Um, so, that one, that little corn one, that's my coal tank. Uh, so, yep. that's where all your wee odds and ends of things that don't, um, colours aren't quite right, or just bits and pieces that come through and you're like, no, you don't belong here. Yep. Um, and yeah, that's where the, the cull shrimp end up as well. So everyone, if you want some cull shrimp, yeah. Where's those? Do you start those campuras? I oh, camp on on my blue snakes. Did you get some from Glenora? I didn't, but obviously yours bred. Yeah, finally though. Yeah. Um, yeah, real interesting. I had green water in the tank for ages, and I couldn't quite tell. Then all of a sudden, I'm like, wait a second, there's fry in there. How many did you get? Um, not not as many as I'd hoped. So like what, three uh, or four? there's only yeah, ah, oh, maybe a half dozen. But we'll go from here. Yeah, go from here. Now there's a couple more though, more than a pair. Um, Look at that male. Thank you for flaring up right there. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, they're a cool one. I definitely still want to get a few of those. So. Yeah. I just love it's got like this like the patterns on them are like a jaguar one. and then like it's got like blue star on it yeah and then yeah I don't know so someone like me just freaks out over weird shit like this but no, they are yeah. really really pretty as are like the ginga rubers on the end there yeah they are I, I don't know something about maybe my color blindness or something weird like that I'm not drawn to them yeah. but um, I get why they're cool for sure yeah they are cool. Like, I really like the tigers as well. Like, I know they're a classic, but... They are a classic. Like, they're just so nice. And they breed so true. Yep. What are these ones? You've got the green cobras. Yep. Um, some of those green cobras, which are one of my favourites. Um, this tank's certainly looking more female heavy, but that'll That's be right. okay in a, a few months' time. Um, I'll be okay with that. And you can see, like, the, the dominant male certainly looks the best. And then El Tigre. Yeah, um, I think I've recently sold my dominant males. I've only got some juveniles coming through. So and all those females will be pregnant, so. Yeah, that's the plan. Oh. Um, and some blondes as well. These breed like crazy. They do breed like crazy and they're really pretty. Um, yeah. I, I really like that gold base that they have. Me too. It's, it pop in like a really good planter tank. Oh yeah, for sure. No, I do like, I love this idea of having like 
just the the live bare corner. Yeah. And when the, when you get that itch again, you can scratch it so easy. Oh, and the good thing about um, like keeping you know light for light fish in the same area, it's like same water, same yeah. temperatures, same food. You know. I I'll, guess the only risk is one just doing the the jump through. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, that's not so much of a problem. Um, but I love it. Like when you look down from here, like I'll, I mean, you just you look up. It's just, it's just fish so, yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Like I remember when I was a kid, I was like dreamed of just seeing this many fish. Yeah. In my bedroom, and you know, this is only one small part of your room, which is crazy. So, and then down here, these I remember these from last time, mascara barbs. Yeah, they're the ones. Yeah. Yeah. And put some size on. Um, Guppy made its way down there. Yeah. Oh, one lucky uh, <laughs> in love. Um, because this side is cooler, I, I do have some shrimp through here as well. Um, like in here, you've got like lots of blues. Loads of blues in here. I remember these, I really like those. The Exorado Rise yeah. Boris, yeah. So you haven't bred them yet? No. Have you given it a go? Um, I no. did ages ago, um, but I need to do it again. I, I just need to do it again. Yeah. Um, you know, I guess I've been focusing on yeah, setting up the fish room to how I want to. Um, yeah, getting that whole side set up obviously took a lot of time. Absolutely. Yeah, they're very nice. And yeah, you got shrimp everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, shrimp are a must have, especially if you want to make just a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. Just to supplement stuff like shrimp, are, you need them. <laughs> yeah. Because they just sit in this tank and breed. and. Yeah, absolutely. And then, yeah, there's uh, I've got some barbs and some other fish out the back um, that get the culls and everyone's happy. Yeah. Yeah. And then... One of these. The rubby nose rice borers or the swiper records. Somewhere in there. Somewhere in there. Um, There's one. There's one. Well, they're just all just super shy. Just super shy. Yeah. yeah. White Tetris. Yeah. Um, so he's like lingering around this cave. Yeah, which would be ideal if that's the case. Um, so they are a cave spawner. They're a tetra that are a cave spawner or a yeah. crevice spawner. What do they do? Like the males go in there and they, do they spawn like cichlids? Yeah. Huh. Um, I haven't spawned them yet, but... Um, well, he's in there. He's in there. That That's going to be half the battle. Yeah. Um, that's really exciting. Nice. Yeah. Florida flagfish. Have you bred these yet? No, I haven't. I've never even really seen them. Um, well, I put a heap of hair. Um, they're in here with some hair algae to help me out. Do they like eating hair algae? They do. Oh, nice. Yeah. So when they call them, well, are they actually from Florida? I've never really even heard about them. I don't know. They are cool. So if they eat hair algae, that's useful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, you know, they're a small fish, so they're only going to be able to eat so much of it. Um, and I don't think it's necessarily their, their favourite food. Um, it would probably be... Oh, it, I can uh, get I'm enough starving. to do it after yeah. and so I'll have a bite. But, Bag of um, chips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, chilies are... Look at all that guppy grass too. Yeah, yeah. So, have you been breeding these? I haven't bred them yet. Oh, come on. I know, I know. Next time I see you. Oh, God, I hope so. That'd yeah. be fantastic. And, like, other people have done it, so it can be done, right? Yeah, yeah, that so gives you so much more confidence. It's it was like... There's so many fish that people are like, yeah, I don't know, but people have like, done when this. I, when I bought the peas, I was like, oh. Can yeah. I breed these? And then, yeah, they started to, they just did it themselves for me. And... Nothing in this one. Um, yeah. So I'm going to put some black um, crystals in here. Is You're going to try out crystals as well. well I've got crystals. Um, so they've just, they were tiny when I got them. So they're probably ready to start breeding now. They take ages to settle in, I think. Yeah. Because um, I've got RO. It, I can remineralize it and they're fine. But, um, I just can't be bothered with it. Yeah, like, that's fair. I got so like inspired after going to Glens and I was like, eh, I'd rather just go to Glens for a couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> He's an expert though, yeah. so that makes sense. Yeah. I'd rather go to Glens and just live through him. Yeah. And he does the same, he comes up to my room and looks at all my rainbows and lives through me. Nice. So. And that's the other part, right? Because you can't keep everything. Yeah. Um, and you've got, what, 400 tanks and you still can't keep everything? Yeah. Um, you know, what help do the rest of us have? But, yeah, um, exactly, yeah. I, I think yes. some of it is just myself, you know, proving it to myself that I can do it or learning how to do it myself. Um, and then, yeah. Do you want to look at the live food? Sure. 
So. So. Oh. Do you want to talk us through what's going on here too? Like with all yeah. these? Yeah. So I've only just moved them across from, they were sitting on the warmer side and look, I really struggle breeding CPDs. Dwarf emeralds are much easier. Yeah, yeah. Um, I find that too. Hoping moving them to a cooler side, um, I'll be able to um, spark them breeding again. But um, it's just an air uplift. So they spawn on the spawning, uh, they spawn on the, the moss. Um, the air gets pulled up through um, and then the eggs theoretically should they get come dumped out through there. Dumped out through there um, and then they move across to the other side. Do so, you just let them raise up in here? Uh, you can do. Um, I, I don't because you pull I them out. Like control over it. Yeah, I know. So, and then um, how many eggs? You're getting quite a few. I'll get more from the emerald raspberries than I will from CBDs. Yeah. It, it really varies. Like you'll get it, you'll get a couple of days and you're like, I can do this. Oh my God, I, 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 I'm, uh, I, it's fine. And then you'll get like a week and like, what do you mean? Nothing's happening. What, what's changed? I swear I haven't got CPD eggs for months. They, probably for about three weeks I haven't had any, but I've just moved them to this cooler side. So hopefully that you, will help. Are you getting any eggs yet? Well, I moved them the last couple oh, okay. of days. So right, yeah, yeah, no, nothing yet. But I should do. Um, that's worked in the past for me. Um, oh. Having um, lowering the TDS um, by using arrow has helped helps as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's hard to get B-roll of them, but uh, they're very shy. <laughs> <laughs> this is what a lot of people find interesting. So you feed tons of live. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. Um, we talked about this last time, but do you want to walk us through like kind of what the ideas and processes yeah, are? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Guinea grills, um, microworms, yep. banana worms. Um, and I kind of alternate. Are doing way... They're doing really well, yeah. So um, that's just mushed up oats? Uh, that's oats, yeah. yeah. Oats, um, a little bit of yeast and um, the, the culture. Yeah. Um, banana worms, and so I kind of alternate each day to do one or the other. Banana worms are meant to be slightly smaller. I don't know. You probably, honestly, surely they're just cross culturing. You um, I don't think so because I, I don't use them on the same day. Yeah. Um, so those are the bananas, and then, um, and then they're like a longer. Yeah. You know, they're definitely they're definitely different. Good yeah, they are different. Um, and, and then grindles. Grindle worms. Yep. Are grindles like out of ten? How hard are they to culture? Oh, two. Yeah. Um, and there's lots of different ways to do it. Some people do it like on a um, like a foam or a scrubber pad or something else yeah. like that, um, or a sponge, um, and which is what I used to do, but. Um, I found using like the cocoa um, peat. peat stuff, um, I just get a, I think a it's a, of it and wet yeah, it. I, I think you get a better harvest and they, it lasts for longer, it doesn't crash as quickly. So you put them in, in the cocoa peat? Yep, um, which is softened and then um, I've just got, yeah. Um, Dog food or cat food? Or yeah. Um, and then how do you harvest it? Um, so I would then get this sheet here, or like on the others, but you can see on there there's heaps of, um, and just dip that in water, um, and they'll all fall off. Watch it. Yeah. Do you reckon you save money on live food? Oh yeah. 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 Because yeah. yeah. there's hardly I hardly buy food. Um, What's is that? So you keep the tap water in a in a I, vat. It's just decor decorinated tap water, so. Um, it's just so I don't have to think about it when I do it, so... Just like that? Just like that. Um, oh, they're quite large too. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's a fish who doesn't like it. So I'll tend to do like most of the trays so you can see heaps How on that one. How often can you feed this? I probably do it maybe once or twice a week. So you can on... harvest like this once or twice a week? Yeah, I'll probably, I could probably do it twice a week, but I probably just do once because there's a lot of fish. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so I go through and go through all the trays. Um, oh, squirming. And three about once a week. I would maybe every ten days replace um, the the fruit will be eaten and yeah, you replace the fruit. This would definitely be so nice for like for little nanos, hey? Yeah. So, so from there, I would then just get a packet yeah. and basically just squirt X amount into... I want to see um, someone eat it. What needs it? Right. Maybe not the right one. Let's do it on the rainbows because they'll go... 
it's going to take a while. Oh. <laughs> Less concerned about it for sure. They're just derpy. They are derpy. Alright, let's feed it to something aggressive. You get, uh, you'll get more fun out of rainbows because they'll lose their mind. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, truly. It must just be so up. healthy for them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I've I played around with the worms. I played around with white worms and stuff like that, but. I've got white worms in the freezer. Do you... uh, freezer, the fridge yeah. up there. Um, and then I've had a blackworm poultry going for about a year uh, in that tank down there, just on sand. And I, I know everyone's, uh, not everyone, people often say using um, gravel works well, but after a year of testing it with this, um, in that tank there with the sand, it, it's oh, that one? well. Yeah, so I've actually just started doing it in the container to your right, Nick. Um, is I've just set this one up. Um, I was as wondering a, what this was. As a, a bigger uh, system. Where did so, you get the container? What is it? Um, it's called an ice table. Um, they use in hospitality and it comes on legs, um, but it just has a drain. So I've popped a, like a overflow through there. Okay. Um, I can put a light on just there if you like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It? Chuck it on. So. So how does it work? Um, it's just an overflow. So you've got um, down the bottom as a sump. Um, and yeah, this is just as a, a drain. And and um, the idea, do they breed in here? Like this sand? Um, yeah, so they'll dig through the sand. So um, yeah. And when you go to harvest, I just use a net. Um, and the net will do a few things. One, you'll get them. But two, you'll like seg um, segment them as well. How much uh, can you harvest? As much as you want. Is it really, like, do you make a ton of worms out of this? Yeah, I've only just set this one up, um, so I've been testing it from just using the smaller version. Yeah. Um, but because I want to breed the peas and I'd like to get into breeding maize and corridoras and stuff, um, to be able to breed anything starts with the food. Yeah, it does, yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm just curious, so, like, yeah, how many worms could you actually, like, this I reckon is... heaps. I reckon absolute tons and tons. So you just bought, like, a uh, kilo and chucked it in there? Uh, 500 grams. Yeah. Yeah. But it could probably have done less. Do you um, have to feed it? Yeah, you'd have to feed it. So just feeding like algae, um, algae wafers, honestly, bug wafer would be great. Anything that you want, you, yeah. you're gut loading them, right? So, because yeah. you're feeding it to your fish, you want to feed your fish food well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Huh. Um, just, and so oh, this is the coldest corner in the fish room, yeah. or the second coldest corner in the fish room. Um, just the way I've been tracking the temperatures. So, yeah. Um, I knew that this would, this would work. That's so cool. Ah. And super cheap yeah. and easy to set up. Yeah. yeah. Keep going with the fishies. Yeah, sure. Right, uh, what do you want to show us? Um, Still using this over here? Yeah, I'm transitioning out of it. Um, and we'll be transitioning the um, the fry from the sushi meal fry that are in here to the other side, just because it will be warmer uh, for them. Yeah. So you got baby Conyers here. Mm, maybe. These ones, I think. I think so. Uh, they were in a tray with a maybe. I hope so, so I think there's only a pair, like two in there. So I think they're my first two that have survived. There's um, like four in there. Oh, sorry. And then there's two others that we don't know. There are two mysteries. I think they're definitely Connies. That'd be excellent if that's the case. Yeah. Nice. And yeah. then what are these more? Uh, Luminatus. Yep. And yeah. But yeah, you obviously use a lot of this floating plant. Yeah. So that's like the guppy grass. Yep, guppy grass. Um, and then the foxtail stuff. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, a lot of shrimp in there those too. Shrimp, uh, Bloody Mary shrimp, um, they're really nice. Uh, that particular one. This one has some cold orange shrimp, so they're a bit less Draft. nice. Um, but yeah, they're really beautiful, the Bloody Marys. And then, yeah, so you're still using these, but just not. I'm just, oh, I'm in the process of printing out new ones um, because they take ages to print. Yeah, how long do they take to print one of them? Um, 12 hours. Okay, yeah. Right. Okay. Um, the tray is like 10 hours and a bit, and then the arms, um, uh, like almost two hours. That's pretty cool. So, um, yeah, and a ton of filament. And then these are more. Ficardas. Um, yeah, and. Like right this second, I can see fry, but I don't know what I had in there last time. Oh, they're tiny. Yeah, I don't know what they were. Oh, that's a real shame. They look like um, 
They'll Werner be a rain sized. Pattern? They look Werner eye sized. Yeah, I honestly don't know. Red fins, maybe. No. Maybe. I'm not sure. Fucking tiny. Mm hmm. There's like a heap of them, though. There's like three or four of them. Five? There's yeah. heaps of them. Yeah. Cool. Alright. I guess, yeah. Um, to my favourite tank? Calvus. No. No. Oh, I don't have any Calvus. Yeah, um, Cordopunctatus. Oh, Cordopunctatus. Yeah. But like, look how good they look. They do look good. I love the vowel. Look at that. Yeah, it's like a tiger vowel. You can yeah. see the, like, the tiger stripes and stuff through it. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So, cool. um, these fish are the fry that you saw last time in the last video. Oh, really? Um, and I was selling them. I'm like, wait a second. I think these guys are pairing up. And all of a sudden, I end up with four pairs um, in the in the tank, and definitely three lots of fry um, from, but potentially four. They call them a shell dweller, but they're really cave spawners. Yeah. Um, they like. Um, this pair here use the K, uh, so use the shell to like hide their fry in from the other fish um, when they're really really small. Um, but that again, like all shell dwellers, it's super great parents, um, and yeah, they create little caves um, to spawn in and keep the fry in. Um, and then when the fry are big enough, they are allowed out. Okay, like you can see, the ones over here are smaller again. Yeah, um, they're tiny. Yeah, but so it's fun and weird how good of parents they actually are. Yeah. So there's a name, Nepralagus cordopuntatus. Yeah. And these are the orange fin ones, um, which. Yeah, because last time we called them cordos, and no one knew what they were. Yeah, so, which is, yeah. I guess, the slang term. Yeah. Um, but like, what I love is like sometimes in the morning you'll come here and you just see like a whole wall of the fry um, eating off the algae on the, the sides oh, yeah. of the glass and stuff. Um, which is, cool. is really important, you know, not to clean every bit of your tank because um, the fry, you know, need to eat off it as well. Yeah. And what's these are bandit cichlids? Yep. And phoenix tetras. No, just pet fish. Yeah, just pet fish. Uh, but real interesting, like, so adding the the vowel, um, because the sorry the bandit cichlids um, uh, like a geophagus, so they'll eat yeah, sand they'll sifters. Eat, yeah. um, I've put the vowel in a pot um, up there. Um, but once putting the vowel in there, the tetras totally changed um, the behavior. way they their behaviour was. Yeah, so they're like sparring more often. And My neons even did that with the vowel. Yeah, yeah. crazy, huh? Yeah. Um, which like and their colours have changed more. Um, what kind of tetras are they? Phoenix tetras. Yeah, you, you can see the like the red coming out on those males um, yep. is nice and intense. It's a cool tank. And then, uh, which I really love. Um, um, look at those. Those are the the rice fish from last yep. time too. Yeah. Pain and blue eye. Yeah. And they're the blue eye is incredible, right? It's just like a um, pseudomerial blue eye. They must all be related from millions of years ago. Like. I wonder, yeah, because it's the same blue. Um, it is. And they're, they're not too dissimilar, really, are they? Not really. They both eat lay eggs and. Yeah, in different whatever. methods, but yeah. yeah. I mean, surely must must be from the, some genetics somewhere. And then these are so nice. Yeah, you've got a couple of tanks of those. Daisy blues. Yeah, everyone loves those. You sell a lot of them still. Yeah. Yeah, good. And these are great fin barbs. So you'll see a male. So there's actually three tanks. And my original pairs in there. So you've been uh, breeding them. Up. I have, um, and you've got a heap in that one there, which now so the heap of the um, fry um, where the originals so just in the middle tank the egg scatterers so I've they've just been egg scattering into the um, the moss you um, just pick out babies when you see them not really I've just been letting them grow up and then pulling them out at that size wait so they they don't eat uh, they do because they would have a lot more they don't very, lay very many eggs they may only lay maybe half a dozen or um, you know, three to five eggs sort of thing at a spawning event. So they'll spawn in the evenings. Yeah. And they, a bit like a better, they like wrap it themselves around each other and you'll see it all the time because they'll do it over these rocks. And, um, and then, yeah, each day I just make sure I just feed fry food and yeah, they seem to. And they just seem to pop up. And they just pop up. Cool. Um, what else is? What else is here? Um, your peas are on the next one over, that fourth tank over. 
Yeah. So. How they been growing? Uh, good. I. Oh, they're quite large. Yeah, I, I wonder if they're. I was going to ask you. You reckon they're ready to spawn? Nearly. Nearly. Oh. They now have all the blackworm in the world. Um, I, I put yeah. So. You, uh, yeah, I can see it there, yeah. So that's a female there. And so the females, like, they're more brighter colour? Females, like, fatter and, like, have actually less. And then the males have, like, a black stripe down their body. Yeah. And they're deeper colour. And, like, you, you don't realise how much they've grown. And then sort of like, wait a sec, you guys are huge. Yeah. Because uh, they were so tiny when I got them. Um, they were, yeah. And then, I guess these are the last few tanks, are they? Yeah. Um, so you've got... Uh, oh, sorry, they're the same, they're these ones. Vietnamese white clouds. Yeah. Are they popular? Um, a little bit. I think they should be more popular because they school really well and they... The you don't need to heat them and... Oh, you would need to heat them if the room's temperature is fine. Um, well, they they, they're not nice. as cold as a regular white cloud, so um, I think that's probably where people come a little bit unstuck with them. They need to be warmer. Mm -hmm. But they're... They're very beautiful. Yeah, they're nice. I really like these up the here. The long fins? Yeah. Yeah. Just like common kind the, of... Yeah. Well, you don't actually see long fin ones very often. You don't often. see the long fins. And you don't see them like aged out. So long fin takes ages to grow through. So to, for the, the fins to show up, I don't know. There must be like six or eight months before yeah. the, the long fins start to t um, come through. Um, some of those ones there would be... Maybe a year and a half or two years old. Wow. But their colours are really nice and there's such a big difference between the males and females and like size wise as well. Yeah. These, I want to know if you've had any I haven't like, done yeah. it, but I have to because I don't want to, to miss out on the opportunity. Have you ever um, got babies out of them ever? I haven't. I've tried twice and I haven't. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, that's not true. I've had fry. I've tried twice. Um, once I didn't get anything. Once I got wigglers and like one fry, but it. After two weeks, it, just that enough, one didn't yeah. make it. Yeah. Weird. They're a weird one. Um, I just need to do more Danios. research. I think. Yeah, Danio Chokeway. That's it. Low light Danios. Is yeah. That the name. Yeah. Um, I know it's not probably up your alley as much, but it's very, very cool. Which is the no. lemon uh, white cloud, which is um, similar to the the Vietnamese, but it's a yellow color, and I think they were discovered. Oh, not that long ago, like and under a decade ago. Um, and now they're in a fish room in a garage in Brisbane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what a cool thing. Garage fish rooms are the best, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh, well, I think that wraps it up, doesn't it? Yeah, um, you've got some long fin, um, red Danios. long fin Danios, but... Red long fin? Yeah, red long fins. Um, and it's really interesting moving them into the longer tank, how much their behaviours changed. Because I had them in a, what, a two foot tank um, and then moving them to a three foot tank. Um, and I guess maybe adding like the rocks and stuff, their real natural behaviours instantly have changed. Yeah, they're a very interesting fish. Like, Yeah, and so busy, like the yeah, amount busy. of movement and stuff. Is, yeah. um, if you've got ADHD, buy some Danios, I think. Yeah. But yeah. No, cool. Thanks, Eliza. Thanks so much for having us no back. Problems. The room looks really good. Thank it definitely you. looks, cool. yeah, like it, it didn't, it looked amazing last time. It looks just so much better now. It's a work so, in progress, right? Yeah, and I hope that next time we come past, you've got some of those other projects. Mm -hmm. I hope you have some me success too. with them. That'd be really cool. That'd and I hope those peas cool. breed for you too. Yeah, yeah, but me yeah. too. Uh, and then, yeah, move through to some quarries maybe next time. So. Yeah, that's a whole other box of frogs, but. It is. <laughs> Anyways, all right. Thanks, guys. No See problem. ya. Thanks.